Praise the Lord. Your voice is as weak as mine. I said, Praise the Lord. We are getting ready for tomorrow. Something is happening tomorrow. It will touch your family. It will touch your children. All our youths are going to be at the youth success camp. I said all. Am I right? And so we'll make sure we we'll bring everyone to the location where the youth success camp is taking place. From tomorrow night, God will begin to pour his blessings down upon every participant there in Jesus' name. As we finish on Saturday, from Sunday, we'll begin to hear testimonies. Lives will turn around. Our children will go up in Jesus' name. Now, for today, we have this exciting Bible study. And thank God you are here. Thank God I'm here. The Lord will touch every life in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the joy of being in your presence. Thank you, Lord, for the life that comes. Eternal life, happy life, abundant life, spiritual life, exalted life. I will pray, Lord, that the teaching of your word tonight will bring life and revival, resurrection to every life in Jesus' name. All the things that shouldn't be in our lives, that we are drooping about and sorrowful about, whatever, your care will, van will make everything vanish away. Life will come where there is discouragement in Jesus' name. Teach us yourself by your spirit. Lift up your people by the study. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. You must give a brighter amen before you sit down. We're coming to Mark chapter 6. And we're reading from verse 30 tonight. Mark chapter 6 from verse 30. And the apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus and told him all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. And he said unto them, Come ye yourselves apart into the desert place and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, and they had no leisure, no room, no time, no liberty, no permission, as so much as to eat. In verse 32, and they departed into a desert place by ship privately. And the people saw them departing, and many knew him, and ran afoot thither out of all the cities and outwent them and came together unto him. And Jesus, when he came out, saw much people, a multitude, and was moved with compassion towards them because they were a sheep not having a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. He saw the crowd. He saw the multitude. He saw much people. And then he had compassion on them because they were a sheep having not a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. And when the day was now fast spent, his disciples came unto him and said, This is a desert place. And now the time is past spent, send them away, that they may go into the country round about, and into the villages and buy themselves bread, for they have nothing to eat. He answered and said unto them, Give them to eat. And they say unto him, Shall we go and buy two hundred penny worth of bread 
and give them to eat? He says unto them, How many loaves have ye? Go and see. And when they knew, they say five and two fishes. And he commanded them to make all sit down by companies upon the green grass. And they sat down in ranks by hundreds and by fifties. And when he had taken the loaves and the two fishes, he looked up to heaven and blessed and break the loaves and gave them to his disciples to search before them. And the two fishes divided he among them all. And they did all eat. And they did all eat. All of them. All of us. Everyone. Without exception. And they did all eat. And they were filled. And they took up twelve baskets full of the fragments and of the fishes. And they that did each of the loaves were about, somebody there tell me, 5,000 men. That's the passage we're looking at today. You will see the disciples had gone out. They went out to preach. They went out to teach. They went out to talk about the kingdom of God. And they brought many people by repentance and faith into the kingdom. And those who were sick, they healed them. Those who were oppressed, they delivered them. And those who had any challenge, they brought solution to their problems. And then they came back and they reported back to Christ. You sent us to do this and that. And we did exactly what you sent us to do. And here is the report. How in our lives every time. As we know that the Lord is sending us. He has given us his word. He has given us his commandment. He sent us into the world to go and do good in the world. And every evening we need to come back. For, an invest, for a kind of a report back to the Lord. I will say, Lord, today, from morning till this time, uh, this is how your grace helped me. And this is what I was able to do. This challenge came, uh, I had your grace, I overcame. This trial came, uh, I had your grace, I overcame. And this temptation came, uh, I had your grace and support, I overcame. Like they came to the Lord. And they reported back what they had done, what they had taught. We need to regularly, frequently come back to the Lord and tell him how life has been. And when we need strength, when we need encouragement, and when we need support, we'll tell him to you and he'll give us all we need for the journey of the following day. And then he told them, come ye yourselves apart before you come apart before you disintegrate, before you fall, faint, and you don't have any strength again. Because if you're always using the strength you have, if you're always using the energy you have, if you're always about doing something and you never retreat to refresh yourself, you might break down. And so he said, come ye yourselves apart and rest not rest for the rest of your life and rest a while because they had no leisure even to eat but the people saw where they had gone and so the people that had needs of teaching of refreshing of healing of deliverance they ran and they met them there and when jesus saw them he began to teach them and after teaching them for some time he was concerned for what they will eat and he provided miraculously for them that's what we're looking at tonight the message is titled christ's compassionate ministry to the multitude christ's compassionate ministry to the multitude 
He ministered to their spirit, to their soul, to their body. He ministered to their present. He ministered to prepare them for the future. Christ's compassionate ministry to the multitude. The passage is divided into three parts. Number one, the ministerial feedback of the faithful toil. The toil that went out, they came back and they gave Christ a feedback. The ministerial feedback of the faithful toil. Point number two, the master's focus on fundamental teaching. The master's focus on fundamental teaching. The Lord Jesus Christ saw the crowd. He saw the multitude. He knew their need. They were ignorant of how to get to heaven after life on earth is over. And he knew the truth about that. He came from heaven to challenge people to prepare for heaven and to give them grace and Christian experiences to get to heaven. And he focused on that. The master's focus on fundamental teaching. Point number three, the miraculous feeding of the 5,000. The miraculous feeding of the 5,000. We come to point number one, the ministerial feedback of the faithful 12. Come back to Mark chapter 6, verses 30 and 31. And the apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus, and he told him all things. They told him all things, nothing to hide. They told him all things, nothing to cover up. They told him all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. There are two sides to what they went out to do. They did miracles and they taught the message of the kingdom. And so when they were reporting back to Christ, they told him what they had done and what they had taught. Verse 31. And he said unto them, Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, and they had no leisure so much as to eat. The ministerial feedback. And then what the Lord wanted them to do after that. In this section, there are three things. Number one, they return to the sender. Number one, they return to the sender. Number two, the report of their service. They reported to the one that sent them the report of their service. Number three, the refreshing of their souls and spirit. The refreshing of their soul and spirit. Look at number one, the return to the sender. We're coming back to chapter 6 of Mark, verse 7. The one that sent them, our Lord, our Savior, the Master, Jesus Christ. He was the one that sent them. Look at verse 7. And he called unto him the twelve and began to send, to send, to send them forth by two and two and give them power over unclean spirits. Look at verse 12, what he sent them out to do. And they went out and preached that men should repent. They went out on purpose that men should repent, because without repentance they cannot enter into the kingdom of God, kingdom of Christ. And in verse 13, and they cast out many devils and anointed with oil many that were sick and healed them. That's what they did. Doing and teaching. As you look at Luke chapter 10, you see that this is the normal thing to do. This is the common thing to do. Luke chapter 10, reading from verse 1. 
Luke chapter 10 verse 1 after these six the Lord appointed other seventy also and sent them two by two and two before his face into every city and place whither he himself would come and there, therefore said he unto them the harvest truly really is great but the laborers are few pray ye therefore the lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest and then after they've gone out to do as well as to teach they came back to christ we must always come back to the leader as he has sent us forth and give a report we mustn't be so individualistic and isolated and independent that we never come back to report you sent me forth we were sent forth and we come back to give a feedback verse 17 and the 70 returned again with joy saying lord even the devils are subject unto us through thy name they return to the lord they return to the savior the sender the feedback afforded them for the fellowship with the lord that feedback gave them the possibility of progress planning you've gone out you have come back to tell me that this is what you taught and this is what you did now he will give them further instruction it was part of their training part of their mentoring part of their ministerial development after the time of christ did that continue yes it continued look at acts chapter 14. acts chapter 14 Verse 25, and when they had preached the word in Paga, they went down into Atlea, and they sailed to Antioch, from whence they had been recommended to the grace of God for the work which they fulfilled. Paul and Barnabas had been sent forth from Antioch. And after they had preached in many places and planted established churches, they came back. We must always do that and report back. Verse 27, and when they were come and had gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith to the gentiles chapter 15 verses 3 and 4 chapter 15 verse 3 and being brought on their way by the church they passed through phoenicia and samaria declaring the conversion of the gentiles and they caused great joy unto all the brethren and when they were come to Jerusalem, the headquarters, they were received of the church and of the apostles and the elders. Look at this. And they declared all things that God had done with them. Feedback. They always gave a feedback. And the same thing we do today. You go to the missionary field, short-term mission, or long-term vision, you're writing reports back. And when you have the opportunity of being physically present at the headquarters, you also give a report. That's the Bible pattern. And I pray we'll follow through on the word in a practical way in Jesus' name. And even here at the local church, you have been given some assignment that this is what you are to do. And either the group pastor gave you the assignment, you come back to the group pastor, make a report back. An assignment has been given to you, responsibility given to you by the old district. You come back to the leadership in that old district. Come back to the leadership in that region. Come back to the leadership in that stage. 
and if it's for a central church here get back to the years and say here is what i was given to do and this is what i did and this is what i taught let's come back now to mark chapter 6 the report of their service there were two sides to the report of their service look at verse 30 again mark chapter 6 verse 30 and the apostles gathered themselves together unto jesus and told him all things told him all things how is the assignment uh, you know you are giving to do praise the lord all is well that's not a report how is it uh, the work you have been given to do thank god it was great that's not a report they told him all things look at this both what they had done and what they had taught they followed the pattern of the lord jesus christ what do i mean by that what you do what you teach acts chapter one reading from verse one Acts chapter 1 verse 1 The former treatise At thy maid O Theophilus Of all that Jesus began To do and teach To do and teach The ministry of Christ The activities of Christ The responsibility The Father had given it To the hands of his only begotten Son Christ to do And teach but he began to do and to teach. And now they came back as an extension of what Christ was doing and teaching. They now told him what they did and what they taught. Look at Luke chapter 24. As the brethren on the way to emails described the ministry of Christ. Luke chapter 24 verse 19 And he said unto them What things? They said unto him concerning Jesus of Nazareth Which was a prophet mighty indeed That's what he did And word, that's what he taught Before God and all the people As you look at your ministry you're not just saying, I'm in ministry. I'm serving God. I'm working for God. You must make it clear what you do, what you teach. You must make it clear the miracles and the message. You must make it clear the influence of your life, the profit to the people, what you do with the people, and what you teach the light of the message you bring to them always has to those two parts acts chapter 7 reading from verse 22 what you do what you teach your deeds and your words acts chapter 7 verse 22 and moses was learned in all the wisdom of the egyptians and was mighty in words the message, the teaching, and indeed the practical performance, the things you do, the acts and the actions, and now the admonition, the message, and the teaching that you give. That's a pattern with all the messengers of God, all the ministers of God, all the servants of God, it must be the same with you when you're giving a feedback i've done this i've taught this acts chapter 21 we're reading from verse 17 acts 21 reading from verse 17 in verse 17 we're told it says and when they were come to jerusalem the brethren received us gladly. And the day following, Paul went in with us unto James, and all the elders were present. And when he had saluted them, 
he declared particularly what things God had wrought among the Gentiles by his ministry. He declared particularly, he declared expressly, he declared giving the details of what God had done and of course what he had taught on what God had instructed him. Galatians chapter 2, reading from verse 2. And so you understand how the ministry is when you are sent to do something and you are sent to teach something. You must have the faithfulness of a feedback coming back to say, that's what I did, that's what I taught in Galatians chapter 2, reading from verse 2. And I went up by revelation and communicated unto them, I shared with them, I reported back to them the gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, the messages that I give. I speak on repentance. I speak on faith in Christ. I speak on how they will come out of darkness and come into the kingdom of light. I shared that. I communicated that to the apostles in Jerusalem, but privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. The disciple reported back to the Lord Jesus who sent them what they had taught, what they had done. They followed the master's footsteps in a limited sense. The extension and the increase will come when they had made some progress. Then they'll be able to do all that Christ has done. And even greater works will they do. And also they will teach all things whatsoever the Lord has commanded. Do you know that like he gave the report, the reckoning final day is coming when, even if you are not giving any report back now, the way you live and the things you do, you are going to give report on the final day. Today, when you give the report, there's a possibility of correction. There's a possibility of mentoring. There's a possibility of teaching and training. On that final day, if you wait until that final day to make the report back, there'll be no chance to correct anything. And where the tree falls, there it will lie. In Romans chapter 14, Romans chapter 14, I'm reading from verse 12. So then, every one of us, young and old, every one of us, members and ministers, every one of us, the careless and the careful, every one of us, the faithless and the faithful, so then, Every one of us shall give account of himself to God. One, the return to the sender. Two, the report of their service. Three, now, the refreshing of their souls and spirits. We're coming to Mark chapter 6, verse 31. Mark chapter 6, verse 31. And he said unto them, Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place and rest a while. And rest a while. That's the recharging of a spiritual battery. And it's so very necessary. There are people that know how to work. They don't know how to rest. They are called workaholics. Work, work, and work. And yet, 
there is no rest. Secular work, joined with spiritual work, normal manual work, joined with ministerial work, from early in the morning till late in the night, they work and work and work. Every day and every time, they work and work and work. And they think that's a commendable thing, that they are not taking any time to rest. It's like the tool we use, like the phone you have. If you're always using it and using it, I need to make this call. I need to make this call. And there is no time, there is no chance to recharge the battery. It will run down. You become stale. You become dead. You become dry and dull. Without that regular connection with the Lord, and without the regular refreshing from the Lord, you will not make any progress. What you did yesterday is what you do today. And what you do today is what you repeat tomorrow. And whatever audience may be in your front, and whatever people you may be ministering to, you do exactly the same thing all the time, whether that is what is needed or not. That's the reason because you are not refreshed. You are not recharging your battery. Therefore, it's running down. It's running dry. It's running dull. That's why Jesus told them, Come ye yourselves apart and rest a little while. Rest a little while. Look at Acts chapter 27. Acts chapter 27. I'm reading from verse 3. Acts 7 verse 3. The next day, we touched at Sidon, and Julius courteously entreated Paul and gave him liberty to go unto his friends to refresh himself. Paul, to refresh himself. That was a busy minister, occupied minister. And you know that Paul the Apostle was always doing, always teaching, always doing, always teaching. But now, refresh yourself. Some people walk and work. There's no time to even eat. There's no time to fellowship with their family. There's no time to sit down with the children and refresh themselves. They think, no, that will be carnal. How can I do that? Sinners are dying. Believers are there. They're discouraged. There are sick people to be stood unto. I've not touched that. I've not reached there. And because of that, they're always on the move. Jesus said, He knew that souls were dying, but He knew that you'll be weak and dreary. And you will not be able to minister appropriately if you are always on the go. Look at verse 34 of the Acts chapter 27. Wherefore, I pray you to take some meat, for this is for your health. I plead with you, take time to eat, for this is for your health. First Kings chapter 19. I'm reading from verse 5. First Kings chapter 19, verse 5. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. Elijah, always busy, always on the go, deal with those false prophets and multiply the oil and the meal in the widow's house and be on the go all the time now arise and eat and he looked and behold there was a cake baking on the coals and the cruise of oil of water at his head and he did eat and drink 
and laid him down again. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. You need strength. You need renewal. The journey ahead is great. You cannot just keep on pushing and pushing and pushing until you drop dead. Verse 8, And he arose, and did eat and drink, and went in the strength of that meat forty days and forty nights unto Horeb, the mount of God. We need that. We need that refreshing. We need to take care of our own personal lives if we're going to be the best for the people we're ministering to. Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Acts 20, verse 28. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves. You do, you teach, then you rest. You work, you labor, then you retire. You run, you walk, you move, then you take time to refresh yourself. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves, and then unto all the flock, over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers, to feed the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. First Timothy chapter 4. Reading from verse 15. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 6, verse 15. Meditate upon these things. Do you have time to meditate? You come to the Bible study, you come to the Sunday service, or you attend another service in the local place, in your district, and you teach, and you preach. After that, you sit down, you counsel and counsel and counsel and pray. And then you get back home, almost getting to midnight, to even eat. And when you eat at that time, when is he going to take time to digest? It says, and then to meditate on the word, so that you are not all the time expending energy. And you are not recuperating. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them. That thy prophet may appear to all. Take heed to thyself. Do you have any uh, kind of medical challenge? There are people that have some medical challenges. But they keep on going. They keep on preaching. They keep on laboring. When are you going to address this issue, this medical issue in your life? I don't have time now. The work is much. I must do this. I must do that. And then we hear that they drop dead because they are not taking time to refresh themselves. God will make us wise. I will be wise. And the Lord will prolong our lives in Jesus' name. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. So recharge your battery. Refresh yourself. Renew your strength. Revitalize yourself so that you will always be in a restored situation. Restore your strength. Rejuvenate yourself. Revive yourself. Calm ye yourselves apart and rest a little while. Ecclesiastes chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 10. If the iron be blunt, and he do not wedge the edge,
then was he put to more strength. You are coaching what the axe. You are walking with that iron and it's blunt. And then you're putting more strength, more strength, more strength. Why don't you stop, file it, make it sharp, and then go back to the work. If the iron, the blunt, and you do not wet the edge, then must he put to more strength. But wisdom is profitable to direct. Is the wisdom of God that made Jesus to tell his own disciples, Come ye yourselves apart and rest a while. We come to point number two now. The master's focus on fundamental teaching. The master's focus on fundamental teaching. Mark chapter 6. We're reading from verse 32. Mark chapter 6 from verse 32. And they departed into a desert place by sheep privately. And the people saw them departing. And many knew him and ran afoot thither out of all the cities and outwent them. And they came together unto him. The people had no consideration about their resting, about their retiring about their refreshing, about the recuperating, about their need to rest and restore their energy. All they were thinking about is, we need you, we need you, we want you, we desire you, we want you to talk to us, we want you to pray for us. And so they outran them, and before they got to the place of resting, the crouch was already there, verse 34. And Jesus, when he came out, saw much people and was moved with compassion toward them because they were a sheep not having a shepherd. You understand that? They didn't have group pastors, local church pastors. The only one they had was Jesus. And the twelve disciples, apostles, were all with Jesus all the time. And all those people had nobody else but Christ. The Pharisees were not feeding them. The Sadducees were not feeding them. The elders in the synagogues were not feeding them. It was like there was no shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. He began to teach them many things. That's what, was, that's what he did always to the multitude. He saw the crowd, he saw the people, he saw the multitude. And what will he do? Teach them. What did he teach them? Matthew chapter 5, verse 1. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 1, and seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them. Always, he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That's fundamental. That's the foremost thing. That's the essential thing. What will it profit if he taught them quite a lot of things and they didn't enter into the kingdom? The fundamental thing is to teach and to reveal and to lead them and to show them the way into the kingdom. Because if they didn't get to the kingdom, all these efforts will be in vain. It just be teaching people that will eventually go to hell, that will not be wise. And so he said, Blessed are the humble, blessed are the repentant, 
blessed are the people that know they are so poor, they have nothing to pay for their salvation, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn. They mourn because of their sins. They are sorrowful because of their sins. And they regret they are done, the evil things they are done. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek. After they are forgiven, after their lives are changed, they remain meek and humble and lowly, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Mark chapter 2, reading from verse 2. Mark chapter 2, we're reading from verse 2. And straightway many were gathered together, in so much that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. That's a fundamental thing. There was a crowd. He had power to heal. He didn't introduce that force. He taught them. He preached unto them. What was he preaching? Let's look at verse 13. And he went forth again by the seaside. And all the multitude resorted unto him, and he taught them, and he taught them, He's showing us a good example that when you see a congregation, a crowd, people, much people, teach them. What do you teach? Verse 17. When Jesus had it, he said unto them, He said, unto, He says unto them, They that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. I came to call sinners to repentance. Luke chapter 13. We're reading from verse 3. Luke chapter 13, verse 3. I tell you nay, but except ye repent, it shall not likewise perish. It wasn't teaching some high doctrines to the people who had not been born again. It wasn't talking to them on just knowledge to fill their brain with speculations. But it showed them, except ye repent, ye shall not likewise perish. Verse 5, I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Let's look at it now from verse 22. In verse 22, and when, and he went, through the cities and the villages, teaching. That's the emphasis. That's the focus. And was teaching fundamental things. And journeying toward Jerusalem. Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. He was telling them, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he's near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the righteous man is sought. Let him return unto the Lord and the Lord will abide abundantly pardoned. Verse 25, when once the master of the house is risen up and a short to the door, and ye begin to stand without and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. 
and he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not whence ye are. Then shall ye begin to say, look at this, we have eaten and drunk in thy presence, and thou hast taught in our streets. You came, you made a camp in our street. You had a retreat in our street. You collected us together into mass crusade in our streets. We even ate and we drank. But you see, they didn't go beyond that. They didn't listen to the teaching of the world. And he now told them in verse 27, but he shall say, I tell you, I know you not when she are. Depart from me, or ye workers of iniquity. Then shall there be weeping and gnashing of tears. When ye shall see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves cast out. He was telling them the purpose of his teaching is to bring them into the kingdom. The master never lost focus. The teacher come from God, never turned aside, never deviated from the goal that the father had appointed. The father taught him what to do. The father taught him what to teach. He kept at it. The people's response or reaction did not divert him. The people's regard or rejection did not change him. The people's readiness or refusal did not make him to stop. The people's repentance or resistance did not make him to be diverted. Their respect or reproach meant nothing. He remained focused. That's what we should do. We should remain focused so that as people hear whatever reasons they have, all the people that came to Christ, there are various reasons for coming. Yet Christ focused on their repentance and on their salvation. That must always be our goal. Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20, reading from verses 20 and 21. Remain focused. Teach repentance. Preach repentance. Whatever is happening, rainfall, sunshine, wind blowing, whatever, preach the word that is fundamental, that sinners will know what it means to be saved. Acts chapter 20, verse 20, and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God. Whatever the situation, whatever the number of the crowd, much or few, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord will make you faithful. And the Lord will keep us faithful in Jesus' name. Galatians chapter 1, verses 11 and 12. Galatians chapter 1, verses 11 and 12. But I certify you, brethren, I assure you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, 
but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. What the Lord Jesus revealed, fundamental, that's exactly what I emphasize. Second Timothy chapter 2, reading from verse 2. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 2. And the things that thou hast heard of me, among many witnesses, the same, don't subtract, the same, don't add, the same, don't modify, the same, don't edit, the same, commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. The fundamental truth that gets souls saved, and after they are saved, they're living victoriously above sin. Teach them. Matthew chapter 28, reading from verse 19. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe how many things? All things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always to supervise. I am with you always to listen to you. I am with you always to find out whether you are faithful or not. I am with you always to support you. I am with you always to supervise you. I am with you always to take on record how faithful you are and then to reward you on the final day. I am with you always, even to the end of the world. The Lord will be with us. We'll be faithful in declaring his truth in Jesus' name. Amen. Mark chapter 6, point number 3 now. The miraculous feeding of the 5,000. The miraculous feeding of the 5,000. We come to Mark chapter 6, and I'm reading from verse 35. And when the day was now fast spent, his disciples came unto him and said, This is a desert place, and now the time is fast spent. Send them away that they may go into the country round about and into the villages and buy themselves bread, for they have nothing to eat. That's the concerned ministers of Christ, the concerned ministers of Christ. Let's look at verse 38. And he said unto them, How many laws have ye? Go and see. And when they knew, they said five and two. Verse 41. And when he had taken the five loaves and two fishes, he looked up to heaven and blessed and break the loaves and gave them to his disciples to search before them. And um, the two fishes divided he among them, and they did all eat and were filled. Number two there, the creative miracle of Christ. The creative miracle of Christ. Christ. Verse 44 and verse 43, and they took up twelve baskets full of the fragments and of the fishes. 
there was something, a message the Lord is going to give even after he had fed them. Number three, the corrective message of Christ. Number one, the concerned ministers of Christ. Number two, the creative miracle of Christ. Number three, the corrective message of Christ. Number one, the concerned ministers of Christ. That's what I just read to you. They were concerned for the multitude. Look at Matthew chapter 14, reading from verse 15. Matthew 14, verse 15. And when it was evening, the disciples came to him, saying, this is a desert place, and the time is now past. Send the multitude away, that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals. Have you noticed something here? They had concern, but they didn't take loss into their hand. They didn't send the multitude away by themselves. They came to Christ, to the Master, to the Lord, to their leader, and they said, The day is past spent, and it's a crowd of people, and there are so very many, and they have not got anything to eat. You send them away. There are some overzealous people today. And there are people that are, they don't regard any leadership today. They just feel that these people, they are there and they shouldn't be there because they must be hungry by now. And they didn't go about telling them, go back home, go back home. You go back home from the rear, from the back, go back home, go back home. And then Jesus will see that the people had gone. And then he'll say, what happened? And then somebody will raise up their hand, I send them away. Because, uh, you know, the, it's night, I, I'm caring for them. You don't care to the point of neglecting leadership. It's not right. And it will not be rewarded by God. He came to Christ and told Christ, send them away. If the people, if the disciples had sent them away by themselves without contacting Christ, we would have missed the miracle of feeding the multitude. And the Bible will not have been complete. This part of the Bible, we're now able to read, make them sit down. Hundred by hundred by hundred by fifty by fifty in an orderly fashion. And fifty times one hundred, five thousand. We would have missed all that orderliness and organization and the miracle. Don't take loss into your hand. Let the Lord take the final decision. Number two, the creative miracle of Christ. I just read that to you. How many loaves have you? We have five loaves and two pieces of fish. Bring them. And he brought unto the Lord Jesus, and he looked up, and then he blessed them, and they all ate. That means the men all ate, 5,000, and many more women and children. Yet the Lord wanted to look beyond this. Look at John chapter 6, reading from verse 10. John chapter 6, we're reading from verse 10. And Jesus said, make them sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down in number, about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, 
and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes, as much as they would, each one took as much as they wanted. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. What a lesson that when we eat, we don't throw much away. And we still give what remains to the people that do not have. Therefore, they gathered them together and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Now, the third thing is the corrective message of Christ. The corrective message of Christ. The people had eaten. And what was their attitude after that miracle? Look at verse 15. In verse 15, when Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain himself alone. And when even was now come, the disciples went unto the sea, and he entered in, and entered into a ship, and went over the sea toward Capernaum. And then he goes on, look at verse 24. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples, they also took shipping and came to Capernaum seeking for Jesus. And when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when camest thou hither? Jesus answered them and said, Listen to this. Did the corrective message of Christ verily, verily I say unto you, Ye seek me, not because ye saw the miracles. You saw the miracles, but you didn't think about that. This must be the Christ. Meditate on that. This must be the Savior. Think through on that. This must be the one that will give us branch in eternity to eat in the kingdom. They didn't think of miracle like that. It says, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. That's how you're looking for me. Material gain. Your stomachs are filled. But your, your soul is starving. And you're not thinking about your eternal destiny. Verse 27. Labor not for the meat which perishes, but for that meat which endures unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you for him as God the Father appointed. He wants us to think beyond the material gain. He wants us to think beyond the food. He wants us to think beyond the material things we have. Think about the kingdom. Romans chapter 14, verse 17. Romans chapter 14, verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. Don't stop there. Multiplied bread, multiplied fish, your edge of that, your stomach is full, but your, your soul is empty. There's no eternal life yet, no salvation yet. Remember that the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Those who stop at the physical, look at how the Bible describes them. Philippians 
chapter 3 Philippians chapter 3 reading from verse 18 Philippians chapter 3 verse 18 for many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Christ why whose end is destruction whose God is their belly whose God is their belly whose glory is in their shame who might as least things go beyond the stomach and think about your soul as the blessings without eternal life profits nothing food from Christ without faith in Christ equals final separation from Christ Christ multiplies food yes it does but he also gives us bread from heaven he heals yes it does he also gives us holiness if you take healing without holiness the final destination will be hell if you have prosperity without purity the final destination will be perdition the question then is are you saved are you born again you have food Do you have faith in christ have you taken care of your spiritual needs that's very important in mark chapter 8 mark chapter 8 verse 36 for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul or what shall man a man give in exchange for his own soul i pray that all that god has provided material and spiritual every one of us will take without throwing away the spiritual in jesus name miracle that's available healing that's available holiness is available to you salvation is available to you renewal is available to righteousness is available to you eternal life is available to you understand meditate on it if christianity only gave you prosperity only gave you material things and you don't have spiritual things salvation righteousness holiness sanctification all the material things eventually will be in vain you will not believe in vain i said you will not believe in vain and remember as we're walking and walking and walking the time comes when we ought to rest rest a little while read the bible for yourself meditate on the word for yourself and be refreshed spiritually yourself so that by the grace of god you'll be taking inventory every time am i still there am i still at the level i ought to be am i improving am i increasing am i making progress am i adding to my life spiritual quality and character as you do that you'll be growing and then you'll be doing the work of god and you'll not fail and you will not faint in jesus name we're going to rise up now and we're going to take whatever we have learned to the lord in prayer what the lord has uh, revealed to us today the feedback we ought to give to the lord and to our leaders whenever we have been sent on our assignment have you been doing that or are you becoming independent are you becoming isolated are you becoming a man all alone by yourself pray that god will grant you humility pray that god will help you and you will do as we have seen the example of the disciples of the lord jesus christ and then they told what they had done and what they had taught and also they refreshed themselves as they came apart tell the lord tell the lord everything you have learned bring it back to the lord in prayer and as for teaching other people revealing the truth to other people make sure you concentrate on
fundamental things on repentance, on faith in Christ, and on real salvation, so that the people that hear you, they will not say they didn't hear how to get to heaven. And after God has blessed you with material things, make sure that you also have your salvation intact, righteousness intact, holiness intact, sanctification intact, obedience to the Lord intact, spiritual growth and progress intact, so that when the trumpet shall sound, whenever it will be, you'll not just have only material blessing, eternal, spiritual, righteous, divine blessings will be yours as well, and you'll go with him to heaven at last.